We are concerned not merely with the technical problem of securing and maintaining peace, but also with the important task of education and enlightenment. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. It's Grant Cameron, and I want to thank you for taking your valuable time to join with me today. I'm sorry you have nothing better to do, um, but you will enjoy my guest. I have a special guest today, and I'll introduce her in a second. And I'm joined by my assistant, Nicole Sackage, and she's got... Um, bandwidth problems, so she's going to be off camera for a lot of it. But uh, I want to welcome my guest today. Um, we're doing a series on UFOs and art and music. And my guest today is Candace Powers, who is into all of that. And we're also going to extend an interview. We did a, a series of interviews on triangles. And because we did that, um, we... Um, had a bunch of people that we learned later, and I suddenly suddenly recalled that um, my guest today, Candace Powers, had a triangle experience. So welcome, Candace. Thanks for joining me. Hello. Nice to be here. Beautiful. And uh, just for people who um, don't know um, a little bit about your background, you're outside of Boulder, Colorado, and every time I come to Boulder, uh, we get together. I think you're actually, correct me if I'm wrong, the initiator of the rabbit hole. I think we had the first rabbit hole in in Boulder. 2013 in Boulder, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've done a lot of rabbit holes. And we used to, for people who don't know, if you ever go to uh, Boulder, um, Candace will meet with you. And uh, we'll people sit and talk all night long. So we would have, I'd be there like for three or four days give one lecture or whatever, but we'd sit there every night and we'd uh, chat about this and that. We'd get everybody on the, get Chris Bledsoe and a bunch of people on Zoom and we'd have what was called a rabbit hole. Now these things are kind of famous now. So uh, the last time I was there, uh, Candace actually um, took me to an event that she hosted of friends of hers. And maybe sometime we can get your friend on because it was the most bizarre experience. Um, I do near death experiences and you have a friend who actually had a near-death experience after getting sucked into a jet engine. And you arranged it. We went over the last time I was there and it was a wonderful meeting. There was what, seven or eight people there? Yeah. And it was like a, a rabbit hole again. So for anybody that's in the uh, Boulder area, uh, there's a lot of people in Boulder, correct me if I'm wrong, that are really into uh, the ecology, they're into spirituality, they're into the environment. They're uh, It's a different sort of place than the rest of the world i think yeah we call it the republic of boulder <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 but it's it's a yeah it's kind of a a, a world of its own for sure now you've had you've had an interesting background you you've always been very nice and when i've tried to uh, pressure you you've always gone along with it that you've you've told your stories you're not a very public person but you have a lot of very interesting stories that have happened through your life. You've had a pretty interesting thing. And, but you started as a singer, correct? You, you actually sang in Nashville. Uh, I did. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. I, I, before that I was performing professionally and got an opportunity to go to Nashville. So I went and yes, that was you're, an interesting experience. You were pretty young then, right? I was. Yeah. Open for Pat Boone. <laughs> oh, now you're really dating me, Grant. <laughs> uh, yes, I did. That's pretty, that's pretty yeah, I, I was very young when I did that. Yeah, I was like 16. Yeah. And one American Idol? Uh, no. <laughs> but you would have won yeah. American Idol if well, you been in it. <laughs> I did win a quarter finalist award in the American Songwriter Contest, though. <laughs> oh, there you go. So, that, so you're the person we want to talk to because we're going to do, first we'll do triangles. Is that okay? And then we're going to do... Uh, sure. We'll do some music and then we'll do art. That's what we had started this um, series. We have a bunch of artists 
And I think you fit right into the the um, the mold of this because what we found is that a lot of people who have experiences suddenly, like Chris Bletto, go racing out and have to buy art supplies and start painting. And uh, Emily Trim, who was out of the uh, the uh, uh, Rhodesian uh, school incident, she had the same experience. She had a second experience in Canada later on. And at that point, she started painting. So we'll get into the paintings. I've got them on a PowerPoint. We'll go through the photographs of the paintings. You gave the paintings away. Is that correct? Most of them, yeah. Yeah. So we'll go through. We've got the photographs and we'll go through the story. So let's let's start first with triangles. I completely forgotten. I've heard your triangle story a number of times. So we did the whole thing on the connection between UFOs and triangles. So go through your experience of, of triangles. Uh, well, it's really, um, yeah, I guess, I guess there's a few things. I mean, you said triangles uh, popped into my head that there's other triangle things uh, <laughs> that I, I forgot about. But, um, uh, but the main one, uh, the one that, you know, I've, I've spoken with you about before uh, is the one that I saw with a girlfriend um, and her two kids and then my son. Uh, How old was your son then? He, it was his ninth birthday. It was on his ninth birthday that we had this uh, event. Okay. And um, and she, my friend, was there with her kids, and um, you know, to attend his birthday party. And um, we were saying goodbye on the front porch. And we lived out in the country, um, five acres, and uh, the property across the street from us, um, you know, was a pretty pretty big property with a lot of land out there so you know it was pretty not not a whole lot of um uh, houses and things like that around uh so we're standing on the porch i'm saying goodbye to her it's just about dusk maybe a little after just starting to get dark and um suddenly uh we see this triangle in the sky above us and it's kind of a little uh, almost over on the other side of the street and <clears throat> it's gold and it looks like one of those uh, uh, rulers that has the middle cut out oh yeah 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 you know yeah yes yeah, because it was it looked black in 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 the center and the rest of it was gold just gold triangle oh. and, and it was spinning so there's this gold triangle it was huge it was really big it was spinning in the sky and we were just aghast you know, uh, looking at this, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what's that? And uh, start yelling for everybody in the house because this was actually my parents' house. They were in there along with my brothers and my sister and, you know, um, so I'm yelling for them to come out and see this and nobody comes out. They just, I, we keep yelling and they, they don't come out. And it's, it's getting smaller as it's spinning uh, and tumbling around, and um, it gets faster as it uh, gets smaller. So I kind of figured out later that that probably meant it was moving away because it was stationary. It was in the same spot. It didn't go anywhere. But as it got smaller, you know, and faster, it, it just occurred to me recently that probably it was, you know, going away. Yeah, because then it did get down to just a speck like that and uh, and disappear right about the time my brother came out. You know? <laughs> so he didn't get to see it. You're skeptical, <laughs> brother? You know, yeah, yeah, you know, so interesting. And um, this is in his his birthday was um, um, uh, August uh, of, uh, of 1985, his ninth birthday. So, um, so he starts to obsess about the Titanic and he, we had seen a, I think we'd seen a movie uh, about it or, or something before. And, um, and uh, so I thought that that's why, you know, he suddenly started obsessing about it, but he was just going on and on. And he kept telling me, mom, they're going to find the Titanic. And, and I'm like, well, yeah, eventually, you know, <laughs> they've been looking for it for years and years, you know, they'll probably find it sometime, you know, no, no, mom, they're going to find it. They're going to find it. And he would get so emotionally involved in this. He would cry and, uh, you know, insist on uh, going to the, to the library, get books or get any videos we could find on it and everything. So um, 
on September the 1st, which was, you know, less than a month, his birthday's on the 19th. So this is what, within 10 three days or yeah. something, yeah. three week whatever, uh, they found the Titanic. <laughs> 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 you know? And uh, and so, uh, so I was like, wow, Josh, they found the Titanic. I thought he would be, you know, really excited. He could care less. <laughs> point it was like you know once they found it once it was it was like it wasn't about actually finding it it was about him having this energy around it you know him having this this feeling about it that that was so big but you know I mean it clearly was a psychic premonition there's no question and for that to have happened immediately after we had this sighting felt to me later, not at the time, you know, you don't hook those things up. Um, but uh, of course, later in later years, uh, I certainly did um, make that connection. And, uh, and Josh is, you know, he's, he's also um, a musician. Yeah. He was professional and, at one point, right? Uh, well, yes, he's professional now. He, he, uh, he's got, um, uh, a couple of albums out and um, the last album he put out uh, is kind of a um, greatest hits of uh, other things that he's done it's called the dig and it's a it's a it's about paradox you know it's about um, yeah well I should let him explain you should you should interview him sometime for the music stuff because all of his music from the time he started doing it um, was about connection with the unseen, the unknown, the, you know, I mean, other, <laughs> uh, he just, and I think he probably became, uh, it was kind of like, you know, I think I, I discussed this in the other interview about when I was 11 years old, but that being kind of a turning point for me in terms of opening me to um, what I would have called at that time the impossible, um, but, you know, uh, uh, things that that um, are beyond uh, kind of metaphysical, beyond the physical possibility that we usually uh, imagine. And uh, so I think that was his opening. I think when he was nine years old and had that experience, um, that that was his opening as well, because that ev all of his music was uh, moved in that direction. Yeah, you, you and I and discussed... It, and yeah, you and I discussed before, he's had almost like download things where he's getting entire songs and stuff like that. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he, he actually wrote a song uh, about that event called Space Overlords. <laughs> about the triangle think, event? Yeah, yep. Yeah, he wow. wrote it all. Triangle event. It describes the entire event. It's very cool. Would, yeah, he would, 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 he be, would he be offended if we put it in here so that uh, just to give it a little bit of, and then we'll interview him? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, he'd love it. Yeah, and he, you know, he, doesn't, he doesn't call it downloads. He, he says he says that, you know, he he, he recognizes that he's in an altered state yeah. and and that he just he just opens to the energy that starts to come in and that that um, he he uh, feels the importance of the, what's trying to come through wanting to exist. That's how he puts it. He, he feels the importance of that thing wanting to exist. You know, and then he just follows through with that. But yeah, you should you should interview him. Yeah, he's we'll got do that. a lot. Yeah, we'll do that. He hadn't done. Yeah, I think he came on one rabbit hole one time. But other than that, he has not really been all that uh, public about it. But I would love to do that. Sure. I mean, um, he, how's his health? Is his health better now in terms of? Uh, you know, he's he's holding his own, and he's got uh, he's got some more um, help with everything that uh, he's dealing with. And so, yep, yeah, uh, of course. COVID, uh, it's made it uh, hard for him to uh, follow up with his usual um, uh, yeah. protocols, but, but, uh, but he, you know, he's, he's still, um, he's still doing okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, uh, you had another one with the, isn't there one with the, uh, the Sasquatch thing with the, uh, the being? With the um, yeah, yeah. Well, now, yes. Now, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a that's a triangle sort of thing because it was with the same person my friend that saw the gold triangle with me and josh so what does she think about all this is she an experiencer do you think 
Uh, you know, I lost contact with her. Oh. I haven't I haven't been in contact with her for over 20 years. Oh, okay. Uh, but at the time, um, you know, she and I were close friends and we were together quite quite often. And um, we, uh, she was at my house. I was living with my parents at the time. And um, we, we decided to go to the store. She and my sister and myself decided to go to the store. And so um, we left and then we had this event on the way back where saw this Sasquatch, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what it was to me. And, and, uh, and then um, a year later, we talked about it. We didn't talk about it at all. We had some missing time and we got home and they're like, well, what took you so long to get here? You know, just went to the store and uh, we didn't talk about it at all. We didn't mention the fact that we'd seen this thing on the road. And then a year later, she and I had conversation uh, where, where um, we were talking about uh, uh, the triangle, you know, uh, or it was, I can't remember the, the order of it either. We were talking about the triangle and then the Sasquatch event came up and, um, uh, or we were talking about the Sasquatch event and then, no, I think we were talking about the triangle. That's how it was because I said, I said, well, yeah, but what about that thing we saw on the side of the road? I said, you remember we saw the triangle? Yeah, we saw the triangle. Well, well how, what about that thing on the side of the road? She goes, no, no, no. She goes, it was going across the road in front of us. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so she had a completely different um, version of, of what was seen. I saw this big hairy thing standing on the side of the road, you know, uh, clearly not a bear. Um, and, uh, and she saw this black lettery thing going across the road and she described it as having, um, I know Sinead got a big kick out of this, but she described it as having triangular shaped legs. I mean, actually they were just feet. There was no legs. It was like, she said there were these triangles attached to the body kind of thing. And, it, and, and, and the way it was walking was it would go down on a tip and then, or, or up on a tip and down on a side, up on a tip, and down, you know, like that. Yeah, uh, like, like, a, like it was a wagon that had triangular shaped wheels. It was rolling across the road or something really bizarre. And, um, and, uh, and I've always thought that she somehow in her mind combined those two events, you know, cause she associated them with me, she, you know, uh, because we were together for both things. So maybe she just, um, she just put those two together like that. But yeah, that's, that's the triangular part of the Sasquatch story. <laughs> that, that, that almost reminds me people, um, I always say that you have some of the best stories of anybody and and so you may even have to, I remember you told me when you had the, told the rabbit story, your, I think it was your boyfriend said, I think you need to be regressed. And you end up in Bud Hopkins care and you have two regressions with him. It almost seems like the same sort of thing is like you have this discrepancy between what you saw and she saw. And it's probably something completely different than what both of you saw. True, could be. Although Josh and I seem to have the same Oh yeah, uh, oh, that, that might have been a different recollection of that. But her her recollection of the triangle though was different from ours. Yeah, she she said it had the it had all these colors and and sparkler like things flying <laughs> off of it. You know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that's about, but it's very interesting. I think it has to do with our filters. You know, uh, I think it I think it's it, it, because we all we all. Um, are subjectively experiencing, you know, um, and, and it could be that we have uh, past life filters and things like that. Even we, you may have no idea how deep those go. So, uh, yeah, could be. Could be. Mm -hmm. Nicole, have you got, Nicole, did you get what you wanted? I did. I got more questions spinning around in my head now, though, too. And <laughs> I, I guess I'm I'm asking or curious about the numerology because um growing up catholic and then denying catholicism i was always told like numerology and horoscopes oh it's um demonic. oh what word am i looking for demonic yeah yeah demonic. besides yeah. demonic no but that it's uh like a superstition and that yeah. you just shouldn't believe in superstitions wow. and you know 
you kind yeah. of still pick up things here and there. And I guess what I really noticed was the further and further into ufology rabbit holes that I went, I noticed the number game people were playing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see 1111 all the time. Oh, wow. I see 555. Yeah, and yeah. then I didn't, I don't know if I can call it a synchronicity, but as I started to engage more in meditating and trying to contact my phenomena, the numbers started, you know, it's like one of those things I blew off. I, I blew it off, you know, it's like, oh yeah, that's what everybody's talking about. They're seeing double numbers. And I realized the more I engaged, the more numbers came to me or pairs of numbers. And 555 five, five seemed to be a big one for me. It was associated with my last big sighting. And I guess I just really don't know where to take these little affirmations. I don't know where to go from there. Aside from, I don't know, I guess maybe I should dive in and start doing a numerology reading like every day or once a month. Like what do you suggest for a newbie? Yeah. Oh, well, it's interesting. You know, um, of course the Bible's full of numbers, mm -hmm. uh, right? I mean, uh, seven times with seven horns around seven people i mean you know <laughs> this is all the sevens that are in the bible you know and uh, and um and then there's even a chapter called numbers uh in the bible as well so you know uh it, it's always interesting to me to hear um people uh talk about uh about numbers that that um uh come from a religious background uh but um uh in terms of in terms of um, where to start, I would say that if you have an interest, you know, uh, there's plenty on the internet um, uh, about numerology, although there's also a lot of stuff that I don't necessarily uh, align with. Um, uh, so, so yes, um, hmm. uh, I'm not sure what to tell you other than uh, then just to, you know, to do some research, uh, to follow up on, on, uh, the numbers that you have an interest in, just Google the number, you know, just put numerology and then put the number and see what happens. You know, you could right. do it that way. Um, or you could consult me. <laughs> and I, could, <laughs> you know, I could give you some more information about that. And then maybe that might, um, by, by getting a jump start that way, you might, uh, then know where else to go. Right. I've, I've just always, from the time I started noticing them now, I do feel like there's like a positiveness behind it. It's always comes around when I'm researching something or like even in with Sinead, the first few conversations I had with her and we were talking about threes and the trifecta and different hunts you can go on looking for threes and artwork and various things and then I I send her a message and I look at my clock on my car and it's 333 yeah <laughs> you know and it, and I just always looked at it as kind of like a positive reinforcement is is there a negative side to numbers is there ever like a warning where you're like oh I just saw that I I need to sit down and work this through yeah well, I mean, you know, the 666 thing, of course, <laughs> that's in the Bible too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's uh, that's always been a, a, a real, uh, uh, what would you call it, a boogeyman of the, you know, <laughs> the number world just because of that. But actually, you know, um, three sixes add to 18. Three times mm -hmm. six is 18. Uh, one and eight is nine. Nine is the number of universality. It's the number of the world. So the beast is the world. I mean, it's a, num it's a human a humanity number. So you could say that humanity uh, is actually the beast. And I would, you know, have to agree with that in terms of, yeah. uh, of, of us being in separation here or having mm -hmm. the illusion of separation and uh, separating ourselves from, uh, from our, our divine side, you know, from, from uh, the spiritual uh, part of our, our, our existence. Uh, yeah, so that to, that to me is like a, a big warning, that particular one. Uh, but mostly numbers, 
you know, all, because we live in duality, you can certainly look at um, one side of the number versus the other side, and they're usually opposites. So that's how I like to look at it is just opposite aspects, opposite qualities, as opposed to positive, negative. Beautiful. Gotcha. Okay, so we'll do a, we'll do an interview when your paper comes out, and Nicole will, and uh, Nicole sometimes finds a bunch of people and we can do a panel, but let's, uh, let's go to music now. Okay. Because uh, that's a big part of your life, and I wrote a book on it. So let's get into, uh, especially your one song, uh, which we've talked about a number of times. Let's talk about that, and that's pretty paranormal stuff. So um, let's talk. Give me some stuff on on music and how you think it ties into ufology and, I guess, reality. How how things actually work. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So I would say, uh, you know, you've talked, Grant, a lot about how uh, uh, a lot of artists, musicians um, uh, tend to be experiences, or yeah. experiences tend to be artists, musician type people, right brained people. Yeah. And, um, and I think that there's, I think that, that, that one of the reasons that could be is because uh, the right brain has more to do with unity uh, whereas the left brain has more to do with individuality. We could say it in really kind of broad terms like that. Like the um, female male thing. The female are builders and the, and the male are the ones that, you know, mess things up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the way it always comes to me. <laughs> no, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, we need both. <laughs> we definitely need both. Um, but, uh, I would say that, um, uh, you know, we have just we have just moved. Uh, this is a little numerology again, but we've just moved into the 2000 millennium, beginning in the year 2000, as opposed to being in the 1000 millennium. Um, and if you start with year one uh, from the year, or sorry, from the year 1000, every date uh, that was written down for a thousand years had the number one beginning it right so because yeah so so one is masculine and uh and if and we can look at our history in terms of patriarchy and where that's been and how that's gone on and you know uh when we hit 2000 two we could say one is sun two is moon one is masculine two is feminine so we've just moved in in 2000 to the um, uh, feminine energy of the number two. And this has to do with collaboration, has to do with cooperation, has to do with partnership, has to do with connection coming together. And of course, we're seeing a lot more women coming up into politics and so on and so forth. You know, so, so, um, so if, you, if you look at the success of Hollywood, for instance, why why do we have so much reverence? Why do we give so much reverence to uh, to movies and uh, to uh, celebrities? And you know, uh, because of the way they make us feel, it's because of the success of Hollywood and their um, goal of providing emotional transportation through film. And how does that happen? How is it that that was successful? Well, it was successful because of the collaboration and cooperation of all these artistic people, right? It takes a tremendous uh, number of, of people, very creative, uh, most likely, most of them right brain. Of course, the left side is in there too, but just saying that the ones that are really making this a success are the people that that are, are in their more right-brained state so to me that's how you know i think this i think this particular time that we're in in this new millennium and coming together um uh, in the way that we are and that there's been more activity uh you know uh, ufo activity or contact activity is because the, the time has come for us to come together and it's the right brain people the artists who are showing the way for how you be successful i mean if you think about it if the world or the united states were to come together like the people in hollywood <laughs> yeah. do 
produce that successful film, think about how successful we'd be. Yeah. Think about think about how much better you know uh, uh, the world would be if we came together in in cooperative ways and collaboration through love and unity and, and uh, connection. You know, so the, I think the ETs, this message comes through over and over and over again. Yeah, the that's theory. the oneness message. Yeah, in fact, John Lennon, I think, had the song come together right now. Yeah. And and Roger Lear, another point, Roger Lear, who did the 17 uh, implant removals in Hollywood, was asked, what's common between all experiencers that you've dealt with? He said, they're all right, right brain creative people and Hollywood is full of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly right. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's to me, the connection uh, between music and art and UFOs is that, uh, that they are using the artistic people to get this message across because artistic people, creative people are more tuned in in that way to unity and oneness and uh, cooperation connection. Beautiful. Yeah. What was your, what was some of your role? Did you talk about the, your, your song, The Heart? Can you go through that? And and some of the stuff that you um, have have been inspired by through through the years. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so um, back in back in the seventies, um, I was watching this movie. Um, they might be giants, and this was just some random movie. I was in the house, you know watching this movie it hadn't heard of it before or anything and by the end of it i was completely taken over i mean i i uh was so emotional and so um just in an altered state really uh from watching that movie and what it was bringing forward which on a linear level i didn't even know what that was is you just at just how it all presented and unfolded and what you know what happened uh you know it, hollywood did its magic on me there and so um i moved immediately from the end of that movie to the dining room table um didn't even turn on the light i grabbed a piece of paper and a pen and i began to write and i wrote this song i didn't even know what i was writing the words were just you know, I, I didn't know why I was writing those words. I just was writing these words. And I, and I wrote it, you know, in probably between five and 10 minutes. Wow. You know, of course, the music came later. I added the, the music part a little bit later, but, but I wrote all of that. And, uh, and, um, and then I ended up uh, recording that uh, in the studio um, in Denver. Uh, this was in Texas when this happened, um, and then in 1981, I think it was, um, I came to Denver uh, with a friend, and we we recorded that in the studio in Denver. And um, then I went back and I and I recorded another version the next year uh, with a close friend who had a home studio in Texas. And so he recorded, and he was one of these amazing people who was multi-instrumental. Um, you know, he, he played a ton of different instruments and so forth. So he said, well, let me just do, you know, let me just try my, my own version of that. I don't even know if I should tell this story. Should I tell this story? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you have to <laughs> now. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So, um, so yeah, so the song was called The Heart. And, uh, and so he did, he, so we recorded another version, a uh, version in, in, his, in his studio there, and uh, I think it was 82. And he put it on a cassette tape, cause you know, we didn't have digital stuff then. He put it on a cassette tape and gave it to me after we finished and I left with it. And somewhere down the line, I lost that tape. I didn't particularly like it as much as the one that um, we had done in Denver, you know, um, I, I feel differently about it now, but you know, at the time, uh, so, so I didn't really, you know, I just kind of stuck it in a drawer sort of thing. Um, and, uh, and then it, in one of the moves, it got lost. So I, I, I lost that tape. So fast track to 2011, 
um, my friend passed away that had recorded that. And I uh, went with a friend. I was living in, in, uh, in Denver at the time, or sorry, in Boulder at the time. And I had a friend from Texas who also knew him. And she came down and we came up. <laughs> I always get those confused. And, um, and, and we, we went to uh, Crestone took a trip to Crestone and, you know, I did some meditations for him, some Buddhist meditations. I was in school at that time at, at the Buddhist school. So, so I did uh, some meditations for him and I had put my computer in the shop before I left. Uh, um, there was something wrong with it and I don't even know what it was and I, I gave it to somebody to, to work with it and then I came back and I got my computer back and um, I noticed that my because I had an album that I had put on there in iTunes um, but it wasn't all together they were kind of you know in, in separate spaces and I couldn't find all the songs from my album so I'm looking all through oh my gosh we're, you know, everything's displaced now everything's all you know different since I got it worked on and where is uh where's my songs so then I come across these two files that say Candace Powers well I didn't have I had mine listed under Candace and Friends you know that was that was the journey album that I, I had done and uh, so I'm like Candace Powers what's that two files you know so I played the first one and it was the heart and and I thought oh well uh what's that doing there I mean I don't know why, why is that like that you know but as I listened to it um it, it sounded different and I couldn't figure out why it sounded different well it was the version that my friend had done in his studio in Texas in 1982 and put on a cassette cassette tape that I had lost and now it's on my computer in digital form right not only once but twice he put it on there twice like like just to make sure you get it <laughs> so that was really weird i don't know why it was on there twice but it was yeah and i realized that's that song that's that's his version of that song i couldn't believe it and of course this i'm discovering this right after he passed away and right after we come back from the trip from creston which i you know so yeah, not only that, it was on my desktop computer too. This was my laptop that I first found it on. It was also on my desktop computer. That's pretty paranormal. What do you think, Nicole? That's pretty paranormal, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. That's why I always say you, your, your stories sort of trump everybody. You have like these really, really amazing oh. stories. What was the hard about, hard about? What was the, the theme of the song? Well, you know, this is the interesting thing. So when you, when you, um, when you said you wanted to do this thing about music, this interview, uh, I started thinking, okay, well, what, what music stuff can I bring? Oh yeah, I'll bring up the heart, you know, cause that's got that story. And, um, and also I felt like I kind of downloaded it and, um, I'll bring that up. And so I thought, well, I wonder when that was exactly that I saw that movie. You know, so I was kind of trying to get a time frame, you know, so I, so I Googled the movie to find out when it was released. And then I saw all these other things came up around it, one of which was um, the ending, that there was this big thing about the ending. This guy had written an article explaining the ending, because apparently a lot of people didn't like the film because they didn't understand the ending. And, um, and so I, uh, so I'm reading through this article and, oh, I never really understood the title of the movie. You know, I didn't pay attention past what I got when I got it, you know, and I never saw the movie again after that. Um, but uh, when I, when I'm reading this article, he puts a quote from the movie in the article uh, from where, uh, Dr. Watson, the movie is about uh, uh, this, this man who uh, uh, thinks he's Sherlock Holmes and he ends up getting hooked up with a medical doctor whose name happens to be Watson, you know, 
And so it's about their, their connection. It's really kind of a love story, but, um, but she's trying to help him. And there's this, she asks him, she says to him at one point, and this is part of the quote in the article, you know, you're just like Don Quixote. Uh, you know, he, he, he thought every windmill was a, a giant. You know, so this, this, so this is the, he's explaining, this is, this is how we, we understand the title of the film. Yeah. He, he says, she says, uh, uh, Don Quixote thought every windmill was a giant. She says, you're just like Don Quixote. And so then the character who plays Sherlock Holmes comes back and says, well, you know, he had a point, uh, but he took it too far. He said, he said, it, it, of course, it wasn't that every windmill was a giant. It was the fact that he imagined the possibility. It was the fact that he thought it could be, you know, that, and what he was saying there, what I got for the first time, Grant, <laughs> because of you, I remember the first time what the title of this film meant and why I was so moved by it and why I wrote that song. Because it has to do, and I think my whole path since then has been about this, which is really interesting as well. But um, anyway, <laughs> um, but, it, but it's, it's about opening. You know, it's about opening your awareness to the possibility of something beyond uh, what what we see and hear or beyond what we imagine or think um, beyond the material existence that we're in uh, that there's something more to life and that all we have to do is to be open to it um, and so that's that's what his answer to her was about uh, why Don Quixote you know was was okay. <laughs> he had a point. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's, um, yeah, that's the, that's the, the story of that. Beautiful. Now, the, re the reason we sort of originally set this interview was because um, I suddenly discovered you're into art. I didn't know this. So uh, let's finish this off with some art stuff. Um, you had some art that was done. And as I mentioned before, the idea that I've run into numerous times is that experiencers suddenly start doing art and they may have never done art before. Art is very right brained. And it's almost like the music that this may be a way that uh, people are sort of um, given messages. So here's uh, some, some of the PowerPoint stuff. And as I said, can you see my screen? Uh, yeah. Yes, but we can't see that. You know, I sent you. Yeah, there. That's the picture. Th that picture is that the next one you've got on there is is that one. Yeah. Uh, so, so this is your this is what you originally sent me. And I was very surprised that you had you were sort of embarrassed. You were showing these things off that you'd done them. Yeah. But talk a little bit about the process where you talked about where you become obsessed and you start to yeah. do these these photographs. Do you want me to go to the next photograph or leave it on this? Yeah, no, go to the next one. Yeah, because that's your supermodel photo there. Oh, no. <laughs> well, no, but the, but the, you can just see it better. You can see the picture better there. Um, so, yeah, so this was in the 80s and uh, I am not at all an artist. I mean, you can tell from this that this is not, you know, in any way uh, uh, trained. Uh, you know, you can tell I'm not trained in art. Um, and uh, what started happening in the 80s uh, especially after I had the visitation in my room of the being, which I shared in the other interview. Um, after I had that uh, visitation, um, I mean, that was a big year. <laughs> it was a big year. All kinds of things were happening and going on. And one of which was I, I would get this um, urge uh, it, at some point and it just came out of nowhere to to you know so I ran and I got some art supplies I came home and I mean all at once I did it all at the same time you know went out and got it brought it home sat down started doing it you know and I I didn't stop I didn't eat I didn't sleep I didn't do anything but work on it and and I didn't have any 
experience with brushes or you know painting like that so I had just gotten these oil pastels I didn't really even know how to go about using them I just started experimenting with it and so I made layers of uh, uh, with my fingers I just rubbed it you know uh, with my fingers I would scribble it on there and then just <laughs> rub it around and, um, and, and when I made layers of these colors on the page, all of a sudden I would start to see a shape, just the way the colors were, you know, blending. Uh, all of a sudden these shapes started to appear and I just followed the shape. Wow. That's how I, that's how I made the picture. And um, uh, yeah. So this is a being that you had in your room? No, not this one. This no. is not the being that was in my room. Okay, who, who is where this came from? I don't, you know, this was, but, but, but some, some of the paintings that I ended up doing after these or in conjunction with them, I should say, um, were, uh, were, were, were not the, the frenzied, <laughs> uh, uh, were obsessed kind of painting. Um, some of them, I had an idea of what I wanted to draw and then I would try it, you know, and, so what, uh, what is this one here with the Spock ears? Yeah, that one, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, it just, that's what came out of the, out of the paper. When I put the colors on there, that was what emerged. And that it. would be what, what time frame are we talking, the 80s? Yeah, that's 80s. And you gave yeah. these photographs away because uh, uh, Nicole wanted to have a Sotheby's auction with all the experience of art. <laughs> 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 yeah no i still have that one i do, oh, still do? Have that one. yeah oh i think i think you'll get good money for it yeah <laughs> the call will get you the best money let's go to the next <laughs> one here what? yeah now so so this one is not one of those frenzied um paintings like that one before this one i i deliberately sat down and and tried to do it why because I was trying to draw the being that was in my room. So the being that was in my room that showed up in 1988 uh, was clearly, I thought it from the back, it looked like the Virgin Mary. Just, you know, if you had a statue of the Virgin Mary from the, and you turned it around, the, you know, the, the long white uh, uh, head piece yep. and then the dress below, that's what it looked like. Were you raised and, Roman Catholic too? No. Not no. religious at all. Mm -mm. I, I always hear this all the time. Everybody says, I used to be a Roman Catholic. I used to be a Roman Catholic. And it's like, I hear this over and over again in the UFO field. But yeah, so, no, not me. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. And so so then that being turned around and uh, and it was clearly not the Virgin Mary. It was this, this white skinned being um, with these big, huge, blue almond shaped eyes. And... Um, and so, you know, uh, there's more to that story, which, you know, we won't go into, but, but um, in any case, after it happened, uh, I, at some point, decided I would draw. It clearly had a feminine energy to it, uh, you know, maybe because of the, the dress, but, you know, <laughs> yeah, but, um, but it also felt feminine to me. So I decided I would draw it. And um, again, not an artist, uh, but you can see in that picture, uh, the space above the eyes. Yep. Uh, I had started to draw the big eyes um, and make them solid blue. And I had to shave, I had to, you know, take that off to pare it down to make human looking eyes. Why? Because it was kind of freaking me out. Wow. I mean, you know, I was like, oh, I just want to. I just want to do a, I just want to do a, a human kind of version of what I saw. But clearly, you can see the the blue rays coming out of the eyes. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, and because that's what the being was doing too. And then I put stars, you know, up there, uh, in there as well to make that kind of connection. And uh, there's even a star, I think, in in in, in her eye. Um, wow. That's, that's there. Uh, so yeah, the, so that was just my first attempt uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 draw that being. Okay, two questions on I, this: Did the eyes, when you saw the being, did it have the big eyes or the eyes that you drew? 
Oh no, it had it had big eyes. The, okay. that's, that's what I said. The the being that I saw it had the big eyes. Didn't, didn't look anything like this. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah. and we and we won't get into it, but you have a thing with blue. Your whole yeah, we're not going to get into that. Yeah, no, we won't get into it. But I mean that yeah, it's interesting. You'd have the blue eyes because uh, we've talked about yeah. your your blue thing, which you've never been public about. But it's it's a big part of your life is this connection to blue. Did that have anything yeah. to do with the eyes? Do you think? I uh, probably yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My my son William, we call him the inventor. He it's like blue is the only color that exists for him. Everything is blue or a shade of blue or the closest to blue you can get. <laughs> oh wow, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, I was it, wondering. It, 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 about this you said the stars on the side do you identify those stars with any known cluster because oh, before man. you even mentioned it i was like hey those those stars are kind of like the pleiades only <laughs> missing a couple <laughs> yeah yeah no i i know i did that was yeah i wasn't thinking anything like that um mm -hmm. i was just drawing this and in, in fact i did eventually make a painting of the bean and uh, uh, I didn't send you that one because it's too big to uh, to uh, scan on my computer. So how, um, how many how many paintings would you still have left? Have you got a collection? Uh, no, not many, just a few. Um, I could I could if you want to wait a second. Well, we I could, I could go grab that that one of the being and show you okay. so you can see the difference what it looks like okay yeah, yeah. We, when we go back off screen what's with the signature what's the what's that mean um that's it's just uh you know that's my it's my sufi name oh i see okay <laughs> yeah did this being did she speak to you no no nope no communication whatsoever just the presence hmm yeah yeah but you felt a connection to her? Uh, no. <laughs> no, is that right? Okay. No, not at the time. I was just, uh, I don't know. I went into some sort of uh, state where I was just observing. I was just, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm guessing I must have been in shock, you know, uh, but I don't remember that specifically. I just remember raising up from what I was doing, sitting in my chair and seeing that across the room and just sort of staring at it and being like, you yeah, know, <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, now this one here, I, I noticed that all three of the four you sent me have this red orange theme going on. Is there anything to that? Why everything seems to have this red orange thing to it? I have no idea, no. <laughs> okay, so to explain yeah. this one here. Explain this. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I can't explain any of them, Grant. I really can't. They, 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 these are just, um, like I said, this was a frenzied one. This was one that uh, I, I got pulled to, uh, to do and, um, you know, blisters on the fingers, <laughs> practically, uh, from, uh, from sticking with it till it was done sort of thing. Um, but no, I have no explanation for any of these really. Uh, except for the one that wasn't the frenzy thing. I get a third eye feeling from this one. Uh -huh. And, you know, like, or people talk about um, being connected with animals, like whether it's an animal guide or a animal spirit figure. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's reminiscent of a lion and that all that power, you know, and the uh, power what of the third eye are, are you part of the group they um that uh, that has the the um the feline group there's a, a group that are in contact with felines in fact nicole and i are doing an interview with um uh c city ranch he said ranch oh yeah uh -huh. his, his big contact he's even got um a conversation where they're on the phone where they're talking on he picked them up on a phone so uh, there is a seems to be a a feline connection that a lot of people claim they've got contact with a feline alien presence, which th this reminded me when I saw this. Well, you know, I had contact with something in the moment that I did this, uh, I think, but, um, but beyond that, I have no idea. 
do you have any one particular type of uh, encounter? Like yours seem to be going, that you're interacting with a lot of different species, whereas a lot of people say, okay, I just had the grays. You seem to have different ones. And, and what do you think about the idea that people have, like a lot of people will have three or four different types of beings that they interact with. Have you got any thoughts on that? Why, why it's not just one being? Are the beings all working together? Yeah, you know, I, I, I can only imagine that, Grant. I don't really know. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I just think, um, I just think that in the greater universe and the greater reality, there is a lot more unity. There is a lot more yeah. uh, uh, connection and oneness uh, than we have in this uh, uh, duality, illusion of separation yeah. uh, existence that we have here. Yeah, I think you're right there, that they understand the concept of oneness. They understand that it's all connected. It's all one thing. Whereas we're into this material, you know, me versus you, Darwin and uh, survival of the fittest. You know, I steal your stuff or you steal mine, that kind of attitude, which I think is kind of unique in the in the universe. Yeah. This one here, again, we're back to blue. This one, I this one I'm very interested in. So go go through this one. So this was another frenzied painting in which all of this came out of the background colors that I blended together. Uh, this just started, started to emerge as I'm blending all of those. And this is the only one at the bottom, you can't see it uh, here, but um, um, there's a date. So uh, it's apparently one of the only ones, I'm, I think there might be another one that I put a date on, but, but it says 1988. So that's, that's how I know <laughs> that this one for sure was done in, in 88, um, which was the, when I had the, the uh, vision of the being, the, you know, the being in, in the room happened. Um, so what I got from this after I finished it and I was looking at it, cause you know, I don't know what this is when I'm doing it, right? It's just afterwards I can, I can imagine or I can, you know, think about it, but, um, uh, or feel into it. And so that's uh, when I felt into this, it, it, uh, what came to me was a return. So it was, it's like a reincarnation theme um, uh, here. And, uh, but I couldn't figure out if they're saying hello or they're saying goodbye. <laughs> so I don't know if this is, cause that looks like the earth over there. I think pretty sure that's the earth. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, so I, 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 I don't know if, um, if this person is getting ready to leave to go back to the earth, because uh, it kind of seems like that. It kind of seems, you know, the, the, the other being has a bit of a sadness, yeah. you know, the, the one with the face there. And, um, and so, so it, it uh, yeah, it just seems like they're, they're reincarnating, like that. Uh, one of them is, is leaving to go back to the earth, the, but it could a, be, but it could be, you know, they're coming yeah. from the earth back to some somewhere else to this other dimension. I love this one. This fascinating painting with the heart. Is that is what did you interpret with the light in the chest there? Um, it looked to me like there was an exchange of some okay. sort mm -hmm. happening. I, I, I'm not sure what that is about, but that's kind of, that's the only thing I could, that's what I, I, I got when I asked, uh, was that um, that's, that, that's an exchange. Uh, and, it, and it felt like an exchange of information uh, as well as um, heart energy. Wow. Um, when was the last painting you did? Oh gosh, I haven't done one in a really long time. Um, In a while. Yeah, a long time. I don't know. I can't even tell you, Grant. I don't even know. It's been that long. So grab grab this other painting and let's see this. Okay, hold on. Beautiful. Nicole, you're still there? Yes, I'm still here. Is this is this fascinating or what? I do. <laughs> it is fascinating. I liked that last one. I kept making me think and I couldn't think of the third term. What is it with, uh, oh, it has to do with threes and women where you're in one phase and then you move. Oh, it's maiden, 
mother and then crone are like oh. the three cycles of womanhood. Oh. Can, can just constrain you out on all that stuff and give you the, the end. You'll have to get uh, a reading and we'll do, um, when she puts out the paper, we'll have to. Yeah, that'll be fun. She could even take a look at yours and give you a, a reading on. You know, I tried to get my numbers and you know, you plug them into this stuff online. And I was like, I have no idea what this means, but I do know my numbers for my birth date and year are nine, five, and four. I wrote those down so I wouldn't forget them. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if you can see this, it's kind of big. Oh my goodness. Can yeah. you see that? Yeah. Now That's you were so talking grays, almost definitely grays. Oh, wow. Except it's blue again. You have the blue eyes. Is that correct? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I was telling you. This is the one This is the one that I drew the human version of <laughs> because I was so uncomfortable with, with making, uh, making it uh, look like this. <laughs> um, you know, uh, and I wasn't sure I, I, I could actually uh, do it, you know, wow. um, to where it would be like representative. But yeah, so that's it. Fascinating, fascinating. Well, what's your what's your take? Um, because now you've heard me talk about it, and when I get this impression, like when people get frenzied and they they have to start painting, do you see it as a method of communication that they're trying to put something through or awaken you, or how, how do you interpret you doing this kind of uh, frenzied painting and stuff like that? Yeah. Um. I, I feel like, because uh, you know, you, you, this is like musicians do this too, right? This, it's about inspiration. We, it's about opening once again to the, to the field, opening to source, opening to, you know, the unknown and, um, and uh, opening to inspiration that, that wants to come in. Uh, and I think the very idea of opening to inspiration lends itself to uh, connecting with uh, the, the divine, connecting with, um, you know, uh, that, that greater reality, that part of us that uh, is calling for expression. And so artists, because they respond to that call, um, you know, uh, are first of all, getting in touch with the fact that that's happening for them and then, um, you know, the reason I think that, that, that art uh, is appreciated by other people, uh, the, the reason that certain artists become famous is because people are inspired by what inspired them through their art. Mm -hmm. So that whole circle of inspiration comes, comes full term, you know, comes together. Um, uh, from artists to 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 others to people, uh, but it's it's that it's I mean that's why we love art because we're inspired by it and uh, and we're inspired by it because the artist was inspired when they did it. Beautiful. Yeah. I have to run, but let me ask you uh, finally: what do you, what are you up to? What are you uh, are you working on anything? Or are you um... just the numerology right now? Just working on uh, you know doing doing the, the reading. I'm a little late. I usually get it out to a little earlier than this, but I'm um, just working on my, my uh, uh, universal reading. Beautiful. And, and I think we'll do, we'll do something if that's okay with you. We're doing another interview with Sinead. So people that want to see the, the first interview that you and I did with Sinead is on my White House UFO channel. This one's going to be on the calls. We'll be on mine later, but it'll first be on the calls. And uh, I think it'd be uh, wonderful to do a numerology one and we're doing a second interview with Sinead correct yes yes because you have so yes. many stories I, <laughs> I make you tell them all the time every time someone's at a, at a thing have you heard her story about the rabbit and I make you tell people stories so. now yeah Candace I know you said you didn't want to go too far into discussing blue or anything but do yeah you think, really not <laughs> do you think it has any kind of link or is there anything to hunt down blue with relation to uh star children or crystal children or the indigo children i, I hear them all called 
possibly the same thing. Do you think? Yeah. Um, okay, I, I'll say this. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll say this, and, and that is uh, not having anything to do with me necessarily, but 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 blue is often associated uh, with Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. That that uh, you know that's a that's a, a color that has a frequency or vibration um, that uh, is reminiscent or um, uh, having to do with the uh, with the greater reality. And you know, I think there's probably uh, it's a very it's a very unique kind of you know of all the colors. You know, it's a it's a it, it came late in terms of people being able to see it. In fact. Um, so that looks like it has something to do with uh, evolution, you know, with our, our ability to connect to the to the greater reality uh, yeah. as we evolved. Mm -hmm. I, I think it would probably be true to say that your blue story, if you were ever to do the whole thing, it would probably be like a book. It's not just like, like a small story. It's pretty long and involved and has a bunch of different pieces. Yeah, it's never going to happen, Grant. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's right, I know. I know. You, you told me little bits of it, and you gave me a little souvenir. You gave me a souvenir of the blue story, so I know a little bit. And and that's what I've I've always appreciated about you is your stories are so paranormal. They're they're just like I mean, just like wow. I mean, that when you start going and and you you're not very open. I mean, you're not very you're not looking for attention. So unless I push you to no. tell the story, you usually don't tell the story. But you have all these stories, and then it's like, what are you told? And it's like there's another story, and it's you've had you've had some very interesting stuff back in in texas with some of the top researchers of the time you've you've been around bud hopkins you a lot of the stuff that people really don't know and yet you're just a simple person living outside of boulder colorado who uh, has all this and i think great wisdom i mean you have some of the best wisdom of understanding the concepts of you know oneness of numerology uh, you do a lot of reading. A lot of people don't know that. So I appreciate that you're willing to share because I think probably you've not done, you've done a lecture for the, the Boulder group. But other than that, you haven't gone on the circuit. You haven't told your story. You haven't written a book. And you basically only tell your story when I force you out. <laughs> yeah, and that's just, just how I like it. Grant. <laughs> my, final, my final question, Candace, is um, from your, I think it was the first painting you showed or the the being in your room you said it you saw the back of her at first and you associated her with mary and Not i've come across time. this myself and with some other experiencers it's like that shape or that iconic looking mary mm -hmm. and i didn't know if, how many other experiencers you've maybe talked to that have experienced the the Mary image because mine changed on me I at first saw what it looked like Mary and child that definite shape and then I got pissed off at it <laughs> and it was like a how dare you come to me like this moment and it changed <laughs> so I've come across this a few times have you come across this as well or just your own experience well, you know, um, not in not with other experiencers. I mean, uh, not UFO experiencers. There, there are certainly the Marian apparitions. You know, yeah. up, up here to a number of people. The Fatima, you know, is the most famous mm -hmm. uh, case. Um, uh, so, so that certainly exists. There's a lot of people that have those those visions. Um, and uh, whether or not Fatima was associated with, I mean. Mm -hmm. UFOs or not, that seems a very interesting. Grant, you should do, you should research that. And do yeah, well, there, there is, there's a lot that have the, the female, like Chris Bledsoe had the, mm -hmm. the lady come to him 2012. It may be the female essence, the, the sort of right. the female part of the universe that we were shifting from the male to the female. It may be yeah. all that kind of stuff because there's a, quite a few people who will start with a, a sort of alien experiences, grays, and then suddenly the female appears. And it's usually yeah. like a, like an angel it's in white and and this sort of thing and i to me i've always seen it as like the female uh energy coming across like i had with my psilocybin experiences i had the one and i and i've got it on tape and i'm saying i am talking to a woman here and it was like and it was like the question is how do you know and it's you you said the same thing it's like you just sense you know this is a female you know when it's a male 
and you can't no. tell why. And I'm saying it's the weirdest thing in the world that I'm actually talking to what appears to be a female. Well, you know, one of the things I did think later, I didn't, like I said, I didn't associate this vision with Mary in the moment. I just was in shock. But later, you know, looking, looking back at it, um, I, I came to the idea that she possibly presented with her back to me so that I wouldn't be too shocked, you know, and, and also presented with those so that because somewhere in my unconscious, I'm sure I was uh, connecting that vision because we've all seen it so much mm -hmm. for so many years, you know, millennia, uh, practically. And um, so, so, you know, uh, I, would, I would naturally probably be more calm uh, seeing something like that. So, so my idea is that, that that was done on purpose to put me at ease. Yeah, because yeah, okay. the feminine energy does that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Wonderful. We'll leave it at that. And uh, Nicole, uh, we, we may end up in Boulder sometime and we'll uh, <laughs> we'll have a, a little chat and we'll have a little uh, rabbit hole thing. And when you get with Candace, it goes till, and you you get along with Candace because Candace can do two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning as well. She, <laughs> she likes to, she's a night person. And these, these meetings go on every night. People don't realize like how many times did we do it? Like every oh, yeah. night for five or six hours. And, yeah. And it went on yeah, for like a whole week. And, and Candace was always there and she wanted, can we do it again tomorrow? And, and we <laughs> do it again. And uh, the, Well, Grant, you're, you're a, a, a fountain of information yourself. <laughs> well, so, you well, know, who are you? I mean, I'm, I'm very surprised at how much you actually know, but you really don't say it. It's not until, uh, you know, I hear you talking about something and like, seems like you have a great wealth of, now you must do an awful lot of reading on different stuff. And you seem to know all the books, all the characters. So I really appreciate you having shared because I know you don't do it very often. So I really appreciate it. And let's get together. You two get together and let's set up something for the numerology thing. Because it seems yeah. like um, uh, Nicole is very interested in this numerology thing and yeah. um, help her out a little bit and let's do a, an sure. interview on that. And hopefully we can get together once the COVID thing is over. Because, you know, I come through Boulder when I'm heading, whether to Laughlin or to LA or whatever. It's a very yeah. simple, cheap flight into Den into Boulder. We can yeah. get together and uh, anybody we'll who has another Boulder, meeting. Yeah. It's an absolutely beautiful place. I don't know if Nicole's ever been there. I mean, Boulder is a place you can't die till you see Boulder. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful place. Yeah, and, that's uh, why it's on my bucket list. But go. yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna set I'm gonna set our next interview for like midnight so we can talk all night. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not not at this point. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of slowing down on that late night stuff these days. <laughs> Beautiful. So thank fun. you, Candice, and thank, thank you, Nicole. Yeah. And, uh, let's you, uh, let's do it again. Thank Beautiful. you, Nicole. Great thank meeting you, everybody. Look more connecting. Yeah. See you.